just wish to take this opportunity to remind uh, members of published figures uh, just this week that indicate there has been a 15% rise in 999 or emergency calls mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland in the last three months during this pandemic on domestic abuse. 15% uh, rise on the uh, corresponding three months uh, of last year. So there is a pertinence to the debate that we are having uh, today at this time. Uh, and I know that given the contributions we have had over the last number of months and at different stages of this bill, there is a sincerity with which all members have approached uh, this bill, uh, not least the Minister, the member for Louth and Horncastle, uh, and I, I praise her again. Um, for her efforts. It would be no surprise, Mr Deputy Speaker, that in previous uh, contributions I have recognised the importance of devolved government in Northern Ireland and indeed recognised that uh, in our devolved uh, legislature there is a separate and corresponding bill. Uh, but I have lamented the fact that that bill in Northern Ireland only tries to close the gap in domestic abuse legislation prior to this bill. And the progress of this bill will leave further glaring omissions within the legislative protection we have for abuse victims uh, in Northern Ireland. There will be no uh, statutory gender definition uh, in our legislation, no provision of a domestic abuse commissioner or office in Northern Ireland, no reforms to our family courts and review of child contact, uh, no changes outlined in this bill will be corresponded in Northern Ireland legislation uh, on housing, homelessness and refuges, uh, no welfare policies additional within this bill applying in Northern Ireland to protect women and children and no protection for migrant services either. And I do hope that in the contributions today and in the passage of this bill, legislators in Northern Ireland take appropriate account of the progress and the changes that we are attaining here in the House of Commons and recognise that those two are appropriate for further legislative passage and consideration in Northern Ireland. The steps we're taking are good, but as through this bill, they don't go far enough uh, and they need to go further. No provision uh, of stalking in our legislation. No change to the fatal, non-fatal uh, non strangulation or uh, rough sex issues. And I do want to commend the Minister uh, for the work uh, and those involved uh, primarily in campaigning uh, on the rough sex uh, defence. I think it's an important uh, step forward. Uh, I know I'm going to be followed, Mr Deputy Speaker, by the Honourable Member for Shipley. Uh, and I do uh, think there are amendments uh, published in the bill uh, that are very important uh, and I hope he will take the time uh, to outline the rationale behind providing legislative protection on parental alienation and recognising uh, that those are important issues that I hope will receive uh, support uh, within the House um, this afternoon. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, New Clause 28 has been mentioned uh, and I, I, I do want to say that I agree with the comments that have been made uh, by the Honourable Lady for Romsey and Southampton North and the Honourable, uh, Right Honourable Gentleman for Bromley uh, and Chislehurst. We're not normal, normally in the same place when it comes to issues set like this, uh, but I think the rationale that they have outlined uh, at this time uh, with this bill are, are important considerations. I thank my uh, colleague for giving way and, 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 and we all know my position on abortion as well. Does, it, does the Honourable Gentleman and friend agree with me that this attempt to add Clause 28 to a bill which is designed to protect from harm is opportunistic and simply wrong and that we can never support this whilst absolutely advocating for the need for changes in our domestic abuse legislation. I'm very grateful to my Honourable Friend uh, and I agree with him in part um, but I will say this uh, about the Honourable Lady uh, for Kingston upon Hull North. I have never found her contributions on issues like, I don't agree with many of them, but I have never found her contributions on issues like this to be either provocative or offensive or sensationalist in the way that she presents them. Uh, I think she presents them uh, in a very uh, cogent way and in a sensitive way, albeit I doubt we will ever agree uh, on the issue um, at hand. Uh, but I, I, I do say, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, that I look forward to the contribution from the Honourable Lady uh, for Congleton. Uh, and I have said before that um, she embarks on Herculean efforts when it comes to the defence yeah, of yeah. life yeah. and the defence yeah, of the rights yeah. uh, of the unborn. Uh, child. And in the three amendments to New Clause 28, I think she highlights the frailties with New Clause 28 uh, itself. You can see them there clearly, amendments A, B and C, highlighting that there is no reference uh, to the nine-week, six-day time limit associated with the uh, coronavirus emergency provision of telemedicine uh, abortion. There is no reference to whether New Clause 28 applies to uh, medical terminations or surgical terminations. 
Uh, there is no reference, and nor was there in the contribution from the Honourable Lady uh, for Kingston, about the impact on victims of domestic abuse at home. The benefit of leaving that home and entering a clinical setting or engaging with the clinician to highlight not just the pregnancy that they are struggling with, but the issues of abuse that they are struggling with. No reference to the 7% of women within our country who procure abortions not because they want them, but as a result of coercive control. No reference to 7% of women who are forced to proceed and procure an abortion because of domestic abuse. Now, time won't allow for sufficient, and in fairness to the Honourable Lady, she wasn't in a position to outline the frailties associated with her own new clause uh, 28. I am grateful that in the contributions I've heard so far, I don't think the House will be minded to support new clause 28 today. Uh, and I will be very clear in my position that I could see no circumstances on which I could support new clause 28 at all.